Greetings from the Buckeye State. Today the road will take us to London, Ohio for something a little different. We're going to the Ohio State University Farm Science Review. Think of it as an RV show for farming equipment or something like that. For me it was extremely interesting, not to mention educational. And I hope it does the same for you. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Welcome to Farm Science Review. We're a three-day trade show in Ohio near London, and we're a department of The Ohio State University. So what we do is provide the latest in innovations in agriculture and uh, have over 100 presentations related to different topics uh, all about agriculture, from the smallest things to the biggest things. So you can find things from home gardening all the way to the biggest equipment. So now you know what it is, and we'll hear more from Nick later. But right now, let me rewind and show you how we got here. Ever since I was able to travel cross-country, when I started doing YouTube full-time back in 2017, I've been fascinated by all the farming equipment and infrastructure I've seen on the road, particularly in the so-called flyover states, where most of our food comes from. We're meeting up with Jim and Barb and their daughter, son-in-law and grandchildren at Madison County Fairgrounds in London, Ohio, a little over half an hour west of Columbus, and Jim has been a fundamental part in the creation of this video. It was at his cousin's farm two years ago that I got to ride on a combine harvesting soy, and now here we are, about to find out how all this stuff works. Jim and Barb have arrived. And just in time for another episode of Fun with the Forest. Here we are at the Madison County Fairgrounds in London, Ohio. And uh, tomorrow we're going to, or maybe, maybe right now. Say hello, Jim. All right. We're going to see some farm equipment. Yep. Yeah, yeah, tonight. You can get to see what I do if you're interested. And then right. tomorrow the big show with the crowd. Well, everybody say hello to Barb and Jim. And, uh, yeah. Rider and Journey. Rider and Journey. That's Journey from four years ago. Yeah. The baby you held. Well, Jim insisted I drove his truck towing his fifth wheel. I think he wants me to upgrade to an HDT. Turn it off a minute. Turn back to oh, you. Oh, oh, that's a clear minute. All right, now forward and let it go through all its buzzers. Hold on, it doesn't yeah. go all the way now. Yeah, like he, it's a aftermarket. There. there you go. All right. The only knob oh, you need good. to push in is the yellow one. Oh, this is cushioning. Okay, the yellow. Yellow one, top one. Push right. that in. Push. Okay, well that's part of the thing then. Go get it. And let's take it back to this line to be in drive. Uh, it's automatic. Yeah, that that's it. One notch work. There you are. All and right. the rest is just drive yourself straight ahead. It's like driving a, a class A motorhome. It'll hesitate for a second. Okay. There goes. Now go to the right. All right. Oh, you don't have to do anything there. No, I'm not doing anything. I'm gonna just. Uh, Nope. Oh, there the you go. Push it harder. I there you go. Push it hard enough. Okay. Yeah. That's the air brake. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're good. I believe it. It's, it'll turn easier than your your camp current yeah, I'm, camper. I'm still, I'm still looking at your camper on the rear view mirror. I don't want to. So no, which you're way to go? You're gonna make a left. Make a left here. Uh, it will follow you about right have, where you want to go. Have plenty of room here. All right. Should I floor it? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Say, drive faster, Robert. So it's automatic. You don't have to be figuring out the 12 nope. gears anymore. Nope. Okay, how do we do this? Just, just follow the curve around. Just going around. Just, All the just way? Go, yeah, just go around to the back. All right. I finally got Robert to drive it to pull a fifth wheel trailer. <laughs> yeah! It's no bigger there, than there. Yep. yep. Just put it in neutral. No neutral there. There. And then pull the yellow knob. No, I didn't break it. So you don't have He's a park. You, you don't have a park. That that is your park in the air that, brake. That is the air brake. Okay. Yeah, because the red one is your trailer brake on a commercial trailer. It don't All apply right. to a camper. Oh. You need to leave it running a minute. I gotta move right. it anyways. Yeah. And Robert. All right. Well, made that it. was fun, man. Thanks. <laughs> hey, Ryder. What do you think? Did he do good? 
Alright, anchors away. We're gonna get a behind the scenes look at, at the farm signs we do. Alright, we're almost there. Jim and Barb, they own a dust control business, and now I get to ride with him as he sprays some of the roads around the exhibit area. It is a great backstage look at what we're going to see tomorrow. He told me that you spray that product enough times, it almost becomes like hardtop. It makes a great difference. We've got such great weather on this late summer day here in Ohio. We are now at the Gwen Conservation Area, which is also owned by The Ohio State University, part of Farm Science Review. Too bad it is getting dark, and here it looks like they're going to be showcasing some plants. And there's a creek! I'm so looking forward to tomorrow, because I've never been to a show like this. And as I mentioned, I've been curious about this stuff for a very long time. That being said, by now you probably know this is not gonna be one of my regular travel shows. In fact, we're gonna dive pretty deep into some of the equipment and how they function. So if you ever wondered, like me, how this stuff works, I invite you to stick around. We're gonna learn a lot. This video is brought to you by our longtime sponsor, Surfshark VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. And it does what it says. It creates a private, secure connection between your devices and the internet. And this is particularly important for us travelers, because no matter what you do for internet, at some point, you're going to have to connect to that potentially insecure Wi-Fi network at the campground, restaurant, coffee shop, hotel, you name it, and, and you don't know, I mean, it might be secure, but most likely, you know, who knows, there could be a, a bad actor, someone eavesdropping on that connection and trying to steal your passwords, your identity, you know, give you, give you malware, and uh, we don't want that to happen, so, you know, it's, it's always a good practice, you know, to connect to the internet, uh, secure and anonymous, you know, with, through a virtual private network, and once you connect to that server, you are secure, but... That's not the only server, and this is my other favorite feature, is that you can connect to servers all over the world, and they have servers pretty much all, over, all around the globe, and, and you can change your location virtually as, long as, they, as, as, as far as the internet is concerned, because the internet is not the same everywhere in the world anymore. Um, every country you know has certain sites blocked and whatnot or content blocked and and um, for example if you're traveling overseas you may want to access some of the programming or, or some of the entertainment music whatever it is that you can access in your home country well that's no problem you, there's a drop down menu and you select what country what city you want to be in and that's where you are as long as the internet is concerned Great, great feature. It has an incognito search for your eyes only, which is also very great, very, very private. And it has other features like clean web, you know, gets rid of unwanted ads, potential mild malware. And I have a very, very special deal for you guys. Just go to surfshark.deals slash myrv and you enter promo code myrv at checkout and you get a very special deal on four months for free or just click the link below. Today coming to you from London, Ohio, and here we are at the Ohio, at the Ohio State University's Farm Science Review. So uh, I got my media pass, and yeah, today we're doing something different. And I'm cleaned up. Ah, yeah, he cleaned up. <laughs> here we are. Hey, G. So this I, I is think we're lost. Jim's looking at the map. I, I think we're lost here, but. Uh, I have no idea what to expect. I don't know where we're going, but all I see is a lot of farming equipment everywhere. So here we are, stopped at this first exhibit. And uh, let me show you what I found. I found my next drone. Take a look at that. I think if you could fit a small, small person. Uh, Jim, what do they use these drones for? 
Oh, that young man, he'll tell you about yeah. it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, what do, you, what do you guys use these drones for? So these drones are used for spraying agricultural products. Oh, okay, I see. Yep. So it's like a modern uh, crop duster kind of pretty thing? Much, yeah, pretty, pretty much, pretty much, right? Except for nobody's just sitting in it. Yeah. <laughs> yep, and, it holds 110 and, and pounds. And DJI, right? Yeah. DJI, yep, oh, DJI. Cool. This is the Mavic 3 Enterprise. I need to upgrade at some point. Very interesting to see all these special purpose drones here. Things we could not see anywhere else. That's why I wanted to come here. Although, I must confess, I was not expecting drones. We're approaching the Case IH display, and I think this is where we're gonna spend most of the time. Jem seems to be a fan, so we're gonna go over all these different machines and learn how they work. Some of them seem obvious, but some don't. At least to the untrained eye. All these vintage tractors, they seem to keep growing over the years. All right, let's start here. Well, as you guys know, I'm a city person and at a place like this, it shows. So I have no idea what this stuff, this stuff is used for. I'm assuming it's a... Uh, that's corn. That's corn. It'll gather in and then that guides it, runs through the throat right. and does the rest. Just like, like Bob with you did on the soybean. Right. And uh, the next one I'm assuming is soybean. Soybean and wheat. All right, so... It's small grains. Yeah, so, so somebody came up with it. Yeah, they engineered all this. Uh, machines, you know, to, depending on the plant you want to harvest, right? This is pretty cool. Look at that, all this stuff. And it's actually all, unlike years ago, it's quick connect. Um, uh, we don't want to break it. Oh, there we go. One okay. One releases the hydraulics. One thing for electric, release the PTL, drop the head. Uh, cool. And go ahead and hop look at, look at the size of these tires. It's, it's taller than me almost. Here we are. Let's pretend we're gonna drive this. Look at this. Look at the windshield on this thing. This is a, like a panoramic. And uh, yeah, it would be cool to know what all of this does. But, oh, the seat goes up and down. And then, very comfortable and these foot pegs are just for resting your feet when you're resting your feet and this would be uh, the accelerator i'm brake, assuming no and brake uh, brake everything is controlled or oh, reverse okay. and different switches for the speeds uh, i mean i don't know everyone on here yeah so. this one is uh because i bob runs one, yeah. it but there's different because you can tell that's meant for the header because it's right the it has the, the... but hey, i'm trying to see if i see r and p yeah uh, is that a... here's a p Here's now a that's P, parking. P H L high low, as I'm assuming, and yeah. this. Uh, I was trying to. And here on the screen, you see like all your stats, right? Yeah, like yeah. how how many pounds of, uh, of grain you have bushels and whatnot. And yeah. Bushels and stuff. I and, well, we, we got a stereo, so you don't get bored while you are, you know. Harvesting. But everything's emergency shut off. But everything's yeah, you know, everything is forward, there, yeah. reverse. One of these days, one of these days, we're gonna make a video of me driving one of these. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe even, <laughs> maybe before the days. But over. I love this panoramic window, man. This is like, you, <laughs> you know, farming is not as hard as it used to be. <laughs> well, well me hard. mental stress, mental Men hard. Mental, mental hard, but <laughs> if you can get one of these, this is beautiful. Check it out under the seat. The jump it's seat. cooler, you know. Like a beer. So we'll just do a quick description on how a combine actually harvests corn. So we have our stock of corn with an ear coming off of it. When we come over to here, there's rotating knives that grab the corn stock. As they rotate, they pull the stock down. The stock can't fit between this gap right here, so the ear pops off. The chains here pull the ears to the auger. The auger pulls it to the center of the combine. There's another chain that takes it inside the combine. If we come around the side okay. here. Okay. Once the material actually enters the combine, this, this would be the heart where you see right here, this would be called the rotor. And depending on the crop, this will spin say 350 RPM inside there. And that centrifugal force 
in there will actually separate the grain from the plant material. So the grain falls through the, the we call them concaves, but falls through the slots there. And the plant material screws out the back of the combine. Then the grain goes through here. We have a giant fan right down here that blows the, the light plant leaf material out. Then the grain falls down to the bottom. And on the other side of the combine, it's pulled up into the tank into the top. So when the tank's full, this big auger right here will dump it into a truck then. So it's pretty simple in theory on how they operate. Yeah, and then the light plant, plant, the plant material goes out. To yeah, the top, right? yep. All right, well, thank you. Yep, no problem. You know, the price range is probably anywhere from 500 to 800,000, depending on the size yeah. and the options. On. Yeah, I, I guess the million, so you know, I, I was I so yeah. above. So, yeah. And the header, 12 row header like that's on there is another probably at least 150,000. Right. Yes, yeah, so all together, probably close to. It's rear four wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And how it out, everything out, right? right. And the yeah. engine, that's your engine right above you. I see it, yeah. With all the. Yep. With major belt it's yeah it's never gonna look this clean again once you start using it <laughs> and back here that's where it spits out the the trash the trash yeah and the then, part of the plant that we don't need and up there there's a tank right yeah objects in camera are larger than they appear by the way you can have that way but see with the having a belt this is like bob so it's got a and this is right. like a mac don so it's uh it's a, it's a conveyor belt instead of an auger gathering you know? right so it's, again this is tailored to whatever plant you're uh well, wheat soybeans yeah are the main ones yeah the main combine is the same just the header that is different yep and there's even other different types of head headers too Anyway. Case IH has a gift shop here, of course. Right. Toy tractor. And maybe I could, I should get something like this for Pelican, you know, because, uh, I mean, this does all kinds of things, right? Yeah. It's a lawnmower. And you can load and you can put different heads here, like to, to carry uh, like logs and whatnot. And uh, back here. That would get dangerous. You'll start digging up everything. I mean, I don't, I don't need, I don't need to hire anybody anymore if I, if I get one of this. Yeah. Non-stop digging. <laughs> Simulators here. And the future farmers. And there's a picture of where we're at. Yeah, right there. We're on the yeah. display area. Yeah. That dry that we sprayed last night was this one here. We went back. And that's here to that, the that nature area. Yeah, right? that's the yeah. nature area. And the grain bins. It must not be touch screen. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, Oh no, there's a grain bin. There's their north farm. So Ohio State has owns all this all over here and then this back over here. And then they own all this and this. And then oh wrong screen. And then Bill Gates farm. Oh, that's Bill Gates. Yep, that's Bill Gates mm. farm. But yeah, here we have some pretty cool vintage tractors. That's all mechanical. Case IH used to be International Harvester until 1985 when they merged with J.I. Case. And here's the evolution. This got our conditioner. Perfect for Florida. This is luxury. That is... Do we have a horn here? No. No, it's off. <laughs> Let's check it out. This is pretty cool. And this is your three-point hitch, three point which is hitch, one in the back. And loader, gears. And they don't have our... It has air conditioning, yeah, but they don't does. say radio. No radio? No radio yet. It would be up somewhere. Oh, up there. There's where the radio would go. All right. There you go. Otherwise, we can get a Bluetooth speaker, right? Yep. Anyway, this is really cool. Maybe I need a bigger one. On Earth. And there's your, the, there's your the three-point. Yeah. You get your hits and you got your three point. And these are the hydraulics outlets right. for like if something that would use hydraulics. Yeah, if you're going to need and then, and yeah, they keep going up in size. Yeah. And up in size. Yeah. And up in size. Yeah, this size. this might be a little too big for Pelican. There's, some, <laughs> there's always a medium. There's always a medium. Or that one, actually. 
Now we're talking. Look at that baby inside the cockpit. Future farmer right there. And then, or, or maybe you just go to the crack. No, that's the one. Oh, that one has the... The crack. Yeah, the yeah, tracks, yeah. Yeah, maybe this one because th but that one would damage my, my driveway. So actually, this is no. the one we need. Actually, this one would damage you. Tires no, would damage one? before the tracks. So really? It turns exact it, same it, way. It, oh, it still turns. Oh, okay. I thought it, it was like, like it just it, right? it distributes away a lot more. Right. Okay. So it, it's 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 like you could go across wet ground with this, where this one may not. Dad? So it just floats. The biggest problem is is cost. Because that tire's probably three to four thousand dollars. Yeah, probably replacing this is uh, six thousand. I'm not sure. Yeah. And then it has a lot more hydraulics in the back. Yep. Because of all this you equipment go, runs yeah. well, like this when you can see the tractor with all the hydraulic lines and stuff. How about we get something like this? Oh, these people are in it. I like that. I like the well, Jim, this one has a cooler too. Push that middle pill. Yeah. There we go. It's, it's a it's a push pedal to adjust. Um, what do we have here? Our gears. Yep. Forward. Forward. The forward and and uh, this is complicated. All um, sorts of different. It's like a, it's like a Tesla, you know, has a big screen. Yeah. And uh, got another screen um, up there. Yeah. Your air conditioning. Stereo. This is very cool. And this is this will be brakes on accelerator or both our brakes. That's uh, clutch, that'd oh, be the clutch brake, and, brake. and then okay. your fr their orange pedal is your, th your throttle. Your throttle, throttle, all right, yeah. yeah. And these are the gears here. Yeah. You're going forward, forward and reverse. Forward it, the reverse. gears would probably be, you'd probably select gears different, and that will speed it. Oh, okay. it, has, it, has a, it has a hair and a, and a, yeah. and a turtle. And, a turtle. <laughs> and there would be different buttons for different settings, and you just, once you learn them, you just hit a button. Yeah, it's it does. Nice. It takes you where you need to do it. We set yeah. up for auto steer. You gotta place sure your phone. Do, do we have power steering here? I'm sure we yep. do, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there ain't nothing that wouldn't have power steering. Oh, they should have pricing information, you know. Just saying. And this if you, ha if you have to ask, it, it costs too it much. It costs too much, and it probably does. <laughs> we did ask how much it costs. Ballpark. First take? Yeah. Yeah. First take, it's an investment. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have to ask, you I can't afford it, right? <laughs> The full sticker price is that one sets is probably about one point three million. One point three million. Wow. Nice. Even got a cable already set up, you get stuck for some reason. I don't know why with a crack you get stuck. Because when you have one of these and somebody else gets stuck, they know your phone number. Oh, um, okay. You, you can drive into a stuck machine, drop the cable, hook the chain in, back out. Yeah, that thing will get out of anything. <laughs> Yeah, they sell all kinds of attachments. Down on the okay, ground. so it's like a right. It's okay, in transport I see, mode I right now. I, mean. I see what I mean. Yep. And this one, and this this gives you an example of. This is more maybe a more size tractor for called him, but yeah. You, this is a hay mower. I'll show you in the front. But you got a hydraulics for folding. And then you got your PTL for operation, and it's mounted on a three-point hitch. Okay. And that's a pull-type hay mower. Oh, I see. Or they call it a disc bike. This is spinning around majorly fast. These little blades, lawnmower, actually miniature lawnmower blades. I see. Like on your lawnmower. Right. They're spinning. This thing's spinning fast cutting. Now, the cool thing with this is, because it's a quick change blade, if you catch something, rock something, it breaks out of the way. Right. And he'd give you the better yeah. details well, on the RPMs. What are those, the, the, those big tractors for well, like, the high well, clearance? Well, first, oh, first since we're on the hay equipment, we're mowers, you had to rake. They got it out of order. He's <laughs> <laughs> a steady friend of mine. Yeah. Round baler. This one will pick up the, the hay. You can do straw too, but hay. This is down. This is in the opening unloading position. Right. Now I've never ran a round baler. I've always done square bales. He'll have to tell you how a round baler really works. Mm -hmm. He's the hay and yeah. I'm the hay and forage working yeah. manager. Yeah. All right. So the hay comes in. So with this closed, it's going to come over that bottom roll. These belts are spinning up. It's going to climb those belts and start turning around and basically just rolls it up into a big circle. Into a big, right, right around the photo there. Yeah. Oh, there. Oh, that's how you make those. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Now you should have started there. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't see the photo until then. Yeah. yeah I'm like, okay, I see this. <laughs> there you go. That's how they make these things. So this is. And this one makes the stackable hay bales we've seen in some states. I'm learning so much here today. Well, I just learned something new. I learned that this triangle means SMV, slow moving vehicle. And uh, I mean, I've seen those and now even some of these, and uh, they told me it's a European thing that they're, they're doing. They have like the, the, the maximum, maximum speed of the vehicle, like this one. Like this one would be 30 miles per hour. So you know, if you're stuck behind one of these on the on the highway, and uh, Jim just told me this is a sprayer, <laughs> and I'm sure he's gonna tell me how it works here real soon. But while we're at it, we're gonna try to climb up there and see. It did make well, so two different do? Yeah. application equipment machines here. So uh, we have a Patriot sprayer, which is kind of a everyday, all day type of sprayer uh, that has a really nice ride. Would go fast, you know, up to right. mm -hmm. uh, road speeds of around 35 miles an hour. That's max. fast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, but it has a limit yeah. as far as how high the crop can get. Right. So mm -hmm. you're going using it for you know, burn down of weeds of our small crops right. for putting on nitrogen. Then whenever you get into taller crops, you want you to get the corn up and you want to put some sort of fungicide over the top or late season nitrogen, right. you move into something like this Miller Nitro, mm -hmm. which uh, has the ability to, to raise and lower goes up, and down. Uh, oh, up to uh, 73 inch clearance. Because all the shields are just folded down, it would be... Yeah. Right, yeah. And you could put those booms and go over top of tasseled corn and, and apply that way. And both machines feature technology as far as being able to see in between the row or sense the row, so it'll steer itself between the rows okay. so. and, uh, and spray using bursts versus just a steady stream. So it will regulate and turn off individual mm -hmm. rows versus uh, sections or the whole machine when you make a yeah. turn into a headland. What cool. size boom is on us? Both have 120 foot booms. 120, 120 foot wide. Both both wow. To give you an idea, Bob's bean head, when you rode in a combine, that's only 40 foot wide. Foot wide so it's his... 1,200 gallon tanks in both. Mm -hmm. uh, it's designed there. for the drive system and the ride. They both have luxury caps in them, so... Yeah. Cool. Price tags. Let's get scary stuff. Well, you're talking on this one around eight hundred thousand, and this one's about seven hundred thousand. Right. Let me get up there and see the amenities. Let's see. I think I can do this one-handed. Let's see. Lift up the seat. Check this out. Oh, look at the tank up here. Actually, it looks pretty cool from up here. Higher perspective. Let's uh, let's see the cockpit here. Ooh, panoramic view. And then again, you have your footrests and your screens all over. Radio, air conditioner. Now this is cell phone mount. <laughs> Hey, in a different life, I may have been a farmer. These are really cool. I guess this is uh, to tell you, but simple means how much you have left. When you're putting your chemicals in, you hook up this for your main product, and this is for your rinse water. And you fill it, and there's a touch screen, so you can put the cycle on. You want to clean right. the tank or clean the booms, fill the tank and you can put your chemicals into this you know mix it and clean out your jug for you and uh, once you're done this all folds up tight so there's nothing hanging down below the machine uh, and the cool thing about this one is I don't know if I told you 
It's got two sets of cameras on it, or one camera up here oh, in the I center see. section. That's going to steer you through the short rows. So it sees leaves yeah. or it sees ground and it steers. Yeah, it's, and it's got two it's radar it. sensors down here. So when you're spraying at the tall corn and you can't see the ground, right oh, there, right it's going okay. the, the stalk and steer it so it doesn't run over the corn as you're spraying. Uh, it is, it's incredible how much technology they're putting on these things. Oh, okay, it's two things. Yep. And then, like I said, Robert, that's what he's saying about clearance. Yep. What's a three-point hitch? It's this just... Is a, uh, yeah, point, 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 and then you have your top link, because that's uh, the third point. Mm -hmm. You get a quick attach here. So, instead of putting a pin in, like some of the other equipment, this can lift up and catch everything and uh, release so it's it. Just, uh, you release, release it. it? Yeah, you just, you just release do that. It there, yeah. Pull the pin, but it, to go in, it would, it's spring loaded. You lift it yeah, up. Yeah, you Cool. And then here uh, you got a plan. This is the plan. You mean you don't you don't you don't put the seeds by hand? No, no. <laughs> you got right, and so, this one set up. So that will be full of seeds there. No, the front tanks for for liquid. Liquid. And then this here okay. had the seed in it. And um, uh, it's and planters anymore. It used to be you always put soybeans and wheat with the drill. Um, any more planters are either set up for corn or beans, or some farmers use both. Okay. Just like this, this small planter, this has got the middle rows or left. I so see. when you're doing corn, it'd be a six row corn planter. Okay. You drop the middle things, and you could use it for, for soybeans, which is a tighter tolerance. Yeah, so everything is accessible. Everything, all the way back to the main radiator. That one yeah, just a little so bit it gets, it gets dusty, you can you just blow them out. Across the road from Case IH, we have John Deere. I would have liked to stop and see what the differences are, if there are different approaches to doing the same task, who invented what, who's copying the competition. This, by the way, a huge fent combine. Apparently, they come in different classes. This one happens to be class 8. Great Plains tillage equipment. And he has a Great Plains grill. Are they compatible? Like, can you. Yeah, everything's. Do a, everything, all the, they all use, use a, the three point uh, hitch. Yeah, everything's the same. Sometimes the hydraulic tips are different. Deer is okay. different than most. Everybody else is usually uniform. There's the seed tender here. This one, white one, and these are the grain carts like Bob. Just a lot bigger than what Bob had that unloaded, combine yeah. unloaded too. Jim is swerving and out of traffic here. I don't know what's going on. I'm breaking he, rules. He's supposed to be a professional driver, not me. Yeah, I'm breaking <laughs> rules. I, th I think next time I'm going to drive the golf carts. That's it. Here's another huge combine. These are feed mixers for cattle. and mowing and choppers. This is very, very cute for the future farmer in your life, in your life right? <laughs> oh, I can Vintage. Here too for $225. $225. What a bargain. We got our grill from a tractor for $65. Yeah. $149 for the case. Very good. That's heavy. Here we have some vintage Messy Ferguson tractors. The name came after the merger of Messy Harris and the Ferguson Company. So many brands you don't know about unless you are in this business. It is a whole different world. Look at the seats on some of these old units. I think comfort is one of the things that has improved the most over the years. There's an old square baler for you.
And this shows you how oh, yeah. much loader technology changes. You ain't taking that loader off once it's on there. It's there forever. And it's yeah. cable, pole, there's cylinders, but then it stays on. And even here, this is going a little bit more modern. It can be removed, but it's a lot harder. You know, it's, it's, it's not like the, not like. These are so well preserved. These tractors from here back are exactly the same. Okay. The only difference is the, the way difference. the front end is made. Okay, I see it. Yep. And, but the, the engine transmission rear end is the same. It looks like this. But they did this, they they called it a mid mount. Yeah. They used to mount cultivators there okay, back okay, in the I day see. on the high ones. And this one doesn't do this, this one. Didn't have that. Apparently, Ferguson invented the three point hitch that is used on all tractors nowadays. This, this revolutionized uh, tractors from just pulling on the drawbar. These have a peculiar speedometer, same gauge for speed and RPMs. Hmm. RPMs and speed in the same. We could spend all day here looking at old tractors, but right now we're going to the field to see the drones in action, among other things. The drone is up in the air. This one is a Hylio AG 130. It is programmed to do the exact same routine time after time. I am curious how a drone like this one would do in less than perfect weather. Being heavier, I am sure it can withstand stronger winds and I wonder how long can it fly? So many questions. Well, apparently this one can do up to 50 acres in one hour, autonomously. Drones have really come a long way in the past few years, compared to the original Phantom I owned 10 years ago. Here we also have a model plane. It is flying again, and once again, the exact same routine. We are witnessing right here the future of agriculture. All automated. Well, perhaps it is the present. Let's go to the field, where they are demonstrating other kinds of equipment, like combines, tractors, tillers. There's a Class 9 John Deere combine, which is pretty impressive. But I believe they have a Class 10 somewhere around here. Here they are doing some tilling demos. I didn't even know that was a thing, but I guess not all tillers are created equal. Yes. They call it a toolbar, where all the pieces bolt on. Sometimes these will be bolted together too. This machine will, this owner will change the depth of this by itself. That's one of the larger tractors with the tracks. It is demo time. Now it is time to inspect the job. I have no idea whether this is good or bad, but it's very cool. Yeah, I see a lot of people examining, you know, the, how it looks after the fact, and, uh, and they seem to be pleased. <laughs> There's that class 10 combine we were talking about. It is a huge, beautiful thing. And here we have a robotic sprayer. It is all becoming automated. Okay. I was probably told, but just different parts. It looks like, like the Hubble telescope, but it's, it's, it's like the inside of that combine that rotor, where the rotor thing is. Okay. It 
is such a massive expo. By the way, a tradition here since the 1960s, attracting students, farmers, and all kinds of people from all over the state. Actually, not only from Ohio, from all over the country and perhaps the world. We got three cheese. Well, Jim, let's eat. Buckeye barbecue, pretty good. There you go, antique farm equipment. This is how it all started. Roland Lipper, who the building is named after, was an Ohio State University agronomist and Hall of Fame recipient. His daughter, Les Malik, who also happens to be Jim's cousin, used to tend the display, and she still comes here every year to the Farm Science <laughs> Review. Now that was, is that from your guy, your grandpa's farm too? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. Let's see, a lot of this stuff he had collected on his garage wall. You know, they first started this antique collection when the uh, review was still down on the campus and they had one uh, open shed building and they thought 1876, you know, the 100th anniversary, anniversary of 19, 1976. And people were so fond of it. Well, they got these cupboards for the country kitchen and most of that stuff came out of Grandma and Grandpa Leeper's farm, my oh, grandpa's really? farm. And uh, uh, the, they were remodeling Orton Hall. So a lot of those cupboards were up in wherever the place that the the, uh, the university furnished, you know, for stuff to be used, be given a new life. And uh, so they got those cupboards. And my jacket says, I Review earned that. Antique crew. There you go. I earned that. You're pull, yeah. pull that. Huh? Liz says it's okay. You can pull, pull that. Pull it. Pull it real hard. Pull hard. Pull hard. Look, we got to go like this, like the air one. We got our 1899 manure spreader. Yep. This is a couple years old. Just a couple. I have a corn husker. Oh, what is this? My dad went up to the. Uh, I've got one like this. It's a corn husker. A corn husker. You, we took an ear of corn in there and you spin it around. It would. You see the teeth and that it would take the corn right off the husk. I find it very fitting to go from the ultra modern, even futuristic, a few minutes ago, to the antiques, because why not? It is actually very cool to see how the previous generations did it and how much things have advanced and changed over the years. I am very glad they have preserved all this unique antique equipment for the generations to come. Is that a picture of your dad in the background in that photo? Yeah. Let's look at JCB tractors. Okay. Let's check it out. And here we are, this one looks easy to drive. We got our two pedals. I 
like this one too, you see? That's a... What are, do you like this one or the, or the red one? We should take a look at the green one. Just for good measure. Jim is not having it. Between you and me, I don't think he likes John Deere very much. We may never find out. Here we have more antiques. 1890, probably in use until the 1940s, milk wagon. Uh, here, 1923 Model T. Also milk wagon, you see the milk jugs up there. And this is a 1930 Chevrolet, Starship's ancestor. And uh, look how easy it would be to work on this uh, engine. Everything is right there. It's a fuel truck, front planner, and the big contraption. It's a um, version, you know. An America standard truck from 1918. Look at that engine. It's a strange looking engine right there. And now we've got tractors. Look at John Deere. And a McCormick Deering Pharma. Several of them. A thresher is a machine that separates grain seed from the stalks and husks by beating the plant to make the seeds fall out. He still makes mowers too. For Pelican. Perfect. A nice old Mack truck here. That from the actually, from the 40s probably? 1951. Oh, 51. Plus and that one. is actually was used in the farm here. It has a chase a lot. That would be more efficient. And then the uh, See, this will rotate to where the drop poles are, right. and you can change it a little bit different. I mean, things are more efficient, but the basic, the basic concept is the same. Regular tractor, but it's got a mounted picker. So, okay. this, this would pick corn like the combine would. Other than this, leaves the corn, the corn actually stays on the ear. So the, oh, husk, okay. the, the debris stays here, but then the corn drops in and goes in the wagon for where the corn's still in the cob. Now this machine here, it takes small bales and turns it into a big bale. Got big bale. Oh. So you can do a small bale, gathers it up, and if you look behind her, they kind of show you, okay, behind her, it's cubed up. Here we've got a milking machine. What do you think, Ryder? Are they milking? Yeah. Cow doesn't look too happy though, so I don't know. Lily Vector. This in front of us is the Vector. It's an automatic TMR mixer. So it goes up and down the barn on like whatever you schedule it to do. Uh, it's got mm -hmm. a laser that'll read the feed height and it'll okay. be pushing the feed height or feed back up to the fence where the cows are. And then if that feed height gets too low, it goes back to its uh, kitchen and then it'll make a new batch of feed and it'll go back out and mm. feed the cows. Okay, I see. That over there is just another feed pusher. All that does is push the feed up. It doesn't feed the cows mm. at all. It just pushes yeah, it up so the cows are always have feed in front of them. Because cows like to pick the feed away from them. Yeah. Yeah, they like to sort through it. This is just a manure collector. Manure so it drives collector. through the barn and on its own, collects all the manure and then goes back to a dump station and dumps it. Wow. So you don't have to have a skid loader in there, you don't have alley scrapers. And it does it by itself? Yep. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like a it's Roomba like, for a barn. Like a Roomba, oh my, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. Like a Roomba for a barn, barn, yeah, that's, that's. Uh, so it's all on its own, cow walks in on their own, it milks them right. on their own. And it just. It doesn't take any people involved at all. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it's running. All this stuff is automated, incredible. Okay, so this is the color. This is the infrared color they put on the cow. It's not a straight. Gotta go straight. We are, we are in journey's hands here. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna make a left. You have to turn that way. There. Very good. Now bring it back the other way. Bring it back. Tomorrow morning, I get you for a few hours. 
how to rescue people from grain from either being stuck in a grain bin oh, okay. or being a thing because and that's what the whole thing the pressure of the grain like if a person goes so far that's the it. ditching machine the tile would drop in the back that whole thing spinning and the shovels are spinning and it drops the dirt on the thing and puts it to the side. It's a rotating thing where I guess if you're going to work on the animal on the side, you can rotate it. So, fencing and feed feeders. male male feeders. There is so much to see, it is overwhelming. Especially for me. I mean, as you can imagine, everything is pretty much new. This is a grain dryer, I hear. And there's like big turbo jets on there. You gotta understand the walls on each side is probably, probably that much where the corn's falling down. Because yeah. corn comes out so wet it can't be stored. It has to be put, put down in a drain and then <coughs> there. Chill. Too much information to absorb in one day. But I'm getting the concept. At least now we know a little bit. And really, that's all we can expect from this crash course in agricultural equipment. People think it's cruel, but actually it's for keeps the animal from getting hurt and keeps the person yeah, from getting hurt. Sorry for the mix. Yeah, that's, uh, it goes up into the silage thing, picks up the silage, and puts it in the mixer. Like the company that did our education sees under a high drugs, drugs. Yeah. Okay. Who wouldn't want to buy a llama? Or, wait a minute, aren't those alpacas? So yeah, they even have livestock here at the Farm Science Review. That's it. I'm exhausted. There is only so much my brain can absorb in a day. And we've barely scratched the surface here. I have enjoyed this tremendously and learned so much. And I hope you have enjoyed it too. As you've seen, there's a lot more than meets the eye when it comes to the agriculture industry. And surprisingly, it is a lot more high-tech than I was expecting. Remember Nick Zakarik? the manager of this event who introduced us to the Farm Science Review at the beginning of the video? Well, as a conclusion, I want to let him finish telling us about all there is to see here. Uh, harvesters, tractors, uh, planters, sprayers, all of those things. The newest innovations out on the market uh, with autonomous machinery, with irrigation and tractors, uh, and then also some, some drones that uh, can spray. So that is the newest things to the market. Uh, even if you're not in agriculture, you can come and learn a lot about what's in, happening in the agricultural industry. And there's a lot of things that you'll probably find if you're handy with tools. There's a lot of tool vendors that have specials during the show, uh, all the way to zero turn mowers and skid steers with attachments, uh, compact tractors with all kinds of different attachments, all of those things that you can find at Farm Science Review. So if you're in the agricultural industry, you'll definitely find something. And even if you just like the outdoors, you'll find things too. Our natural resources area is the Gwynn Conservation Area. It's 67 acres dedicated to natural resource practices uh, from waterways to wetlands, ponds, uh, wooded areas, uh, a lot of different things to see there and different other new practices. We also do demonstrations so you can see harvesting of corn and soybeans, some tillage, and then some of those ag innovations with autonomous machine machinery, drones, uh, and then also some drainage tile installation. So a lot of things there. In Ohio, we have a major concern about uh, water quality and those drainage installations will help uh, some of the water quality issues that we see across the state and across the nation. So. Uh, come out to Farm Science Review. We're in September, uh, second full week after Labor Day each year. Uh, so three-day show, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. In the morning, we say our goodbyes and continue our journey. I want to thank Jim, Barb, Gabby, Ryan, Journey, Ryder, Liz, of course, for her charm and knowledge, all the reps at the show who so graciously explained how everything worked, and Nick for inviting us to this eye-opening experience. On the next one, we continue in Ohio, but we're shifting gears to finally visit the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, the Wright Brothers Memorial. 
and then we'll drive a little farther north to the Armstrong Air and Space Museum in Wapakoneta. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in my arms